Hello, everyone, and welcome to our very special Trunk Show series of Quilt Stars. I am so excited to be coming from Quilt City, USA, and I have to say a huge thank you to our sponsor, Genomi America. Genomi is sponsoring this trunk show, and without it, we couldn't be here with Kimberly and her beautiful quilts. So thank you, Genomi. And everyone, stay tuned, because about halfway through, Genomi is going to be giving away a Skyline S6 sewing machine valued at $1,999. And if you stay tuned, you'll find out just how to enter. Now with that, I want to get started with Kimberly. You are the national spokesperson for Genomi America, and my friend, welcome, and thank you for being here. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here and to kick off this whole Trump Show series. Oh, I am so excited and it couldn't happen to a better woman. I can't wait to see the beautiful quilts <laughs> that you have to show us. Thanks. Now, Liz, the, I got to warn everybody, this is a totally unscripted event. Um, <laughs> this is not my typical Trump Show. I, I thought we'd do something really fun and different, so I'm calling this the Lesser Known Quilts. <laughs> Do you know lesser known means an, it's an exclusive look is what I say. So That's I cannot. Right. Nobody's yeah. seen them. Half of these quilts I haven't seen in many, in many years. So it's going to be fun today. Totally kind of off the cuff. But these are all quilts that played a part in my quilting journey. And um, they're sentimental to me. I, I have special feelings about them. And, and so I just thought it would be fun to share something different for a change and to do something exclusive for you. Oh, uh, well, we are so excited and thank you. We are honored to look at them. And with that, let's just get started. All right, right here behind me, you'll see one that um, really this quilt is in, ironically, this one's in the most recent book that I did through the American Quilter Society. So the pattern is actually in Clever Combo Quilts, but it's a design that I had designed way 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 back and it was featuring how to, uh, how to make flying geese with no math no stress no wasted fabric using my flying geese ruler but it also makes those beautiful sawtooth stars so this this design was around uh, for quite a while and I just kind of sat on it for a long time I had smaller versions decided to enlarge it uh, for the book but uh, this is kind of what got me kicked off with that ruler. So you can see that um, this is just quilted very simply with um, a repeating motif uh, all over. It's got this smaller motif, a smaller scale inside the blocks and then kind of a larger motif on the sides. But it's all made with batiks, which I love because Liz, there's no batik I've ever met that I didn't love. <laughs> <laughs> There's this beautiful was, colors you can get with a batik. I love, I, whenever I think of you, I think of bright and beautiful colors, and it <laughs> definitely shows that. I know. Sometimes I try to quilt with more subdued colors, but when I gravitate towards these. This, <laughs> this is my wheelhouse right here in these colors. But this kind of kicked it off for me, oh gosh, way back in the early 2000s, uh, when I first started really publishing patterns and publishing books with you all, this, this kind of started it off for me. So um, if we'll move on to the next one, boys, are you ready? Let's bring the next one. This, we're making this a family affair here today, Liz. I've got um, my husband that you all know as Mr. Kim. <laughs> say hi. <laughs> hi, Mr. Kim. He's behind the hi, camera. And these are my boys. Speak around, guys. That's Josh over there, our oldest and our youngest, Andrew. And they're helping out today. They're home from school, and they're helping out today. So they're going to switch out the quilts. And okay. we've got some to share. Thanks, guys. Well, we like the whole family family to be involved with our quilting endeavors, so it's so great to see all these smiling faces. They really are, and both of my boys know how to make a quilt, so, um, you know, they're, they're pretty good on a sewing machine, actually. That's impressive. You know, we, we need more younger and male quilters, so we need to encourage them to keep quilting. Boys, you can just drop that one on the table and bring the next one right away and then switch out if you want. There you go. We'll get it. We're, we're good. And we have a whole That's system. Fine. So this is literally the front of our house. My studio is in the front of our house. And literally our front door is right there. And we have our living room and our, our family room and kitchen food there. And I took over what was the living room as my studio. So here they're hanging a big one for us. Here we go. 
And how's the how's the view, Mr. Kim? It's doing great. Perfect. So this one, oh, this is a blast from the past. This is called English Enchantment. And um, the PVC pipe we're using here is bowing a little. That's why it's not hanging flat. But this one, I am. I, I would never part with. You want to know why? <laughs> this was the first quilt that was ever published in American Culture Magazine. And I think it was, it was back in, oh my goodness, maybe 2005 and uh, maybe 2006. I kind of forget, but this was the first quilt that I ever had published in American Culture. And it was, it was one of those amazing moments where the heavens parted and the angels sang. <laughs> because I was so, I, I couldn't believe I had, a, I had a quilt that was in American culture. Well, so it's a match made in heaven, you know, yeah. because we are so delighted to have your column Stray Threads um, in, every, in every issue. And uh, we think you're going to be doing something extra special for us next year, too, that everyone's going to be excited right. to see. Another series quote coming for all year, and you all are going to love it. It's so different than anything I've done, but it's like one of my favorites. But along with this, um, I did a, another little version of this in a small version. Here we go that is just kind of fun. It's the same pattern, and it's the same pattern as English Enchantment behind me, but just done in some, in some bright colors. Big surprise there, right? But <laughs> some fun with that, a little checkerboard border. But you can just see um, how different it looks from the English Enchantment. I thought this was fun, and I could never, ever part with these quilts because they just have so much meaning for me, and, and I just love them. And it's just two blocks. Um, and they're, they're just easy, um, but just two blocks and rotated and, and over and over and then alternated with a little pieced border. So that's all there is to this, but I just loved it. And so I thought I would share that. We're just kind of stepping back in time a little bit. Well, thank okay, you for well, sharing that. And I love seeing how you can make, you know, the same pattern look totally different with different fabrics and different colors. Different right. Absolutely. Good job. Thank you, and I want to tell everyone who's out there watching, if you would like, there's a tour. Um, we get to see Kimberly's studio. Uh, we have a, our other video series, Quilt Stars, which you can go back and look on our Facebook page or our YouTube page, Quilt TV, to see the whole tour of the studio. And it's really delightful. That was fun. We had a good time that day. That oh, we, we always fun. have a blast, Kimberly. <laughs> <laughs> I know we do. Yes, we are friends more than just uh, business uh, associates. Okay, we're moving on to a quilt that was in the very first book that American Culture Society published for me called Quilt, A Travel Souvenir. And this is a small one, but it's called Copenhagen Tulips. And um, this one was, uh, the whole book kind of stemmed or came to be because um, we lived overseas. My husband is retired Air Force, and we lived overseas, and while we were there, we traveled a bunch, and this is a quilt made with all Dutch reproduction fabrics that I bought at a little shop in um, Amsterdam called Den Haan Wagenmakers, and uh, bought all these fabrics, and this one was a perennial favorite. I, I can't even tell you how many classes I taught, taught at different shows um, for this quilt. What's really interesting about this, other than that the fabrics are all Dutch fabrics, each of the three uh, blocks are tulip blocks. So you see, here's one block right here, and these were called pieced tulip blocks. And um, this one is another tulip block here, and this one has um, some Y seams, so there's some good technique there. And finally, in the corners, we had an applique tulip block. But you put all these tulip blocks together, and it creates a star. And that's what I love to do when I'm designing is to create blocks and take them and put them together in a way that creates a secondary pattern, a secondary design. So then recently I kind of updated it. I still love this one. This one is always gonna be one of my favorites. But recently I updated it in some brights and solids, changed the borders a bit, changed the corner blocks, so that it wasn't applique, it was just all pieced and gave it kind of a more modern look. I mean, it's still the same design, but I wanted to give it a refresh a little bit and I love it just as much, but that was really special. Well, and it's so unique and you know, you just, you, you switched out that white and I, I can't quite see the quilting, but it looks like you might have some straight line quilting in there. 
Um, yes. And, and it really does. It just modernizes the whole thing. So even, even an older pattern, it, it can really turn it into a brand new quilt. Get it, give it a refresh. That's exactly right. So that, yeah, there is some straight line quilting and just some stippling. There's just stippling in the background too. And so, you know, I just love doing that and, and trying to take things and just make them look a little different each time you make them. So this was another good one. And again, this was probably the most popular um, design in that first book. Everyone loved it. And I still, even now, get requests for the pattern for this. So that's kind of fun. It's a perennial. <laughs> Thank you for showing it. I love that quilt too. Yeah. Okay, boys, ready? Here we go. They are such good helpers. Always I can tell they really are. Be careful on those ladders, boys. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. Andrew's so tall, he almost doesn't need the ladder. I he's can tall. tell. He's about to hit the ceiling. Yeah, he's about 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, oh my so. goodness. And, and so I, don't think his, I don't think his older brother likes it that his younger brother's taller. Than him, so. <laughs> older brothers <laughs> tend to not like that kind of thing. <laughs> okay, here we go with the next one. Here they come. Oh, this is a good one. I have several versions of this to share. Let's see. This one, again, I'm kind of known for uh, piece flying geese. Again, with that technique with my ruler, using half and whole size strips so there's no 7 eighths or 3 eighths or 5 eighths of anything to cut, and no wasted fabric, no stress. And this one appeared in my book, um, Jelly Roll Quilt Magic. And what I loved about this quilt was that word got back to me that this was Meredith's personal favorite. <laughs> and I love that, so um, that she really liked this quilt. So I have a, um, an affinity for this quilt because Mer Meredith liked it so much. But what started out as my inspiration for this particular colorway was this paisley fabric right here. Can you zoom into that or can you come closer a little bit? Um, this paisley fabric and I thought I just I started with this paisley and I thought oh I love this I'm gonna make big wide borders from this paisley and I'm gonna do that it's called rainbow geese crossing because I was using uh, like a rainbow jelly roll to make it and um, the thing was when I made the top and I put the big wide borders of that paisley fabric on there it looked terrible <laughs> the paisley fabric just looked kind of like drab pink overall, and it didn't go with the quilt. And so my design had to be changed at that point, and I had to take off the borders. I did end up using it for the binding, and so that worked out really, really well. Um, so uh, it, I did get to use it. But you know, sometimes those plans when we're making our quilts, they don't always turn out the way we plan, and we have to kind of change our minds and change some things and, and regroup, and that's what happened here. So, um, but you'll notice here with the flying geese, what I did was I used the center portion or the center triangle for each of the geese coming into the intersections and the side triangles of those flying geese are used from the background fabric. And what's great about this pattern is how many different um, design elements or design layout options you can do by changing the placement. So we have another quilt ready to go. It's the same pattern, but it looks entirely different because of how I, I placed the fabric. So we're ready for the next one. If you know what okay. I think is really interesting about uh, what you said there, Kimberly, is I've talked to a lot of different um, teachers and friends of AQS who, who agree with what you just said, which is sometimes your plan might not go exactly right, but it's not a failure. Yeah. It's an opportunity to make something totally different and to learn from it. So that turned out beautifully because of, because of that change. Yes, I mean, when I, when I remember, Kent, do you remember that? We put the borders on, we hung it up. It was before it was quilted and Kent said, it's not quite so pretty. <laughs> and I was like, you're right. It's really not. I wasn't offended because he was telling me the truth. And, um, but you're right. It was a design opportunity to take it and do something different. Now, here's the exact same uh, pattern. And this one is done with, oh, gee, does anyone out there remember that Paris flea market fabrics from Moda? Um, that's what this, these fabrics are, and it kind of made it scrappy, except for, I mean, even here it's scrappy, but the intersections are kind of either reds or browns, but here what I did 
was I focused on using the light colors in the side triangles instead of the center triangles. And it gives it a whole different look, don't you think? Oh my goodness, it absolutely does. You know, it reads more like strips than the geese, but when you get yes. up close, you see those beautiful uh, floral geese in there. It's, it's really absolutely. how it paints. So it's that same pattern that's in Jelly Roll Quilt Magic, but it's just how I laid, uh, laid out the fabrics or I placed the fabrics. And I have one more to show you that's the same thing. Stay there, Mr. Kim, I'll grab it. Here is the same design. A little smaller, but look at this. I really like that so one. That it's, it's like chevrons, yeah. so it looks more like arrows. So it's just where the fabric placement is to give it that look of the arrows. So this is again a more modern take, and this is done with my solidish fabrics that I have. A solidish, they're like a basic blender line with timeless treasures, and that's what these fabrics are. Oh, that's so cool to see how that's adapted across time and across the different uses of fabrics. And I want to tell everyone who's watching out there, I hope this inspires you. So when you have a pattern that you try out, maybe you um, have sat with it for a while and you want to try something different, redo the quilt. Try out yeah. audition new fabrics, audition new placements and see what you can do with it because you can always make something brand new and beautiful. That's exactly true. I mean, you can get so much more mileage out of some of your favorite patterns just by changing the fabric placement and, and how it looks, or going with a different fabric line, or you know, just doing something different. So don't be afraid to try new things. Even if you just do a sample block at first, put it up on your design wall and live with it to see what else can I do with this? That's, I encourage my students to do that a lot. That's a really good teaching moment and really good advice. And I hope everyone takes that advice and, and plays with different patterns. Awesome, okay. So now we're gonna move into a bit of whimsy here, I think. Ooh, I love whimsy. <laughs> so I, I have, um, although I'm known for precision piecing, um, I'm not pigeonholed into that. I love applique, I love all kinds of different things. In fact, that big surprise we have coming next year for our American Quilter readers is very much different than what they're used to seeing from me and a lot more easy machine applique, but it's really gonna be fun and I can't wait for it to debut. So, um, and I'm so tickled. I, I, I so appreciate all the American Quilter readers out there that I hear from. Um, every month after the column runs, I get emails and texts and people are really seeming to enjoy my, my Stray Threads column. So just keep those notes coming because I read them all and take them all to heart and I always try to respond to every single uh, comment or text. Well, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to tell everyone, um, if you don't already get American Quilter, if you go to AmericanQuilter.com, you can become an American Quilter Society member. And among all the other wonderful benefits, you will get a subscription to that magazine and you can see what all the fuss is about. Right, exactly. And there's a lot of good stuff in those magazines every single month. Um, Ann Hamill, who's the executive editor, just keeps doing a great job putting in content that's interesting for everybody. And that's what I love. There's a little bit of everything. So, all right, here we go. This one was um, a, a quote I designed and it ran in a magazine in about 2007, I believe. And I keep saying now that the copyright has come back to me, I'm gonna publish a standalone single pattern for this. I had more fun making these girls, <laughs> my corset girls. Um, because at the time we were living overseas and you know how when you go to those discount chain stores where you get all those trims like rick racks and pom-poms and oh they just have all kinds of things that can't can you zoom in on these two i had more fun pulling out my presser feet and trying all the different presser feet the pearl feet the beading feet to attach all these pretty trims and look i even made little garters from my decorative stitches <laughs> that little garter <laughs> cute I I had more fun with this. See, I got a little more garters down here. How I just, I just, I know, isn't it? <laughs> I just had more fun adding frillies and even a little tassel here. So um, I just had a really good time with this and it helped me um, learn to use those different presser feet that come with our machines that we don't take out very often. 
you know, those different ones. So I would encourage people to play with trims. I have another one, Mr. Kim. If you got, I've got a smaller version here, and this is a little blue version of kind of the same thing, a little bit smaller. And I always call this the bride one because she has, she's wearing curls. <laughs> and um, the, down here at the bottom, that's the sassy, um, sassy lady who's been married for a very long time. <laughs> trying to make things interesting. I don't know. Um, but I had more fun making these. These are, this is a really fun one. So they, this was, again, people would look at this and maybe not think of me as the designer because <laughs> it's so different than what I usually do. But, um, you know, I, I always like to just um, challenge myself to do new things and try new things and kind of wherever the, the whim takes me. Oh, I love that. It is so whimsical. I definitely wouldn't have immediately recognized it as one of yours. And I, I love looking at it. And I want to tell everybody too, you know, um, we talked about how there's going to be a giveaway later in the show. Uh, we're going to tell you how to enter that. And I think that on that Janome machine, you could definitely play with all sorts of amazing features. And how fun would it be to make a quilt like that one with that new Skyline S6? You know that Skyline S6 comes with a lot of extra presser feet too. A lot of those feet that you can use to add these trims and beads and all these fun things. So yeah, it comes with so much. So I really hope everybody enters. That's a lovely gift that, um, that Janome is doing, giving away. Lovely. I, I have lovely to say, I, wish I could enter. I'm sad that I can't. So everybody <laughs> can and you make sure you do. <laughs> now this one, it was never published. It never went in a magazine. It didn't go in a book or anything. But this one, I am always trying to up my game myself. And um, <laughs> the reason that I love this one so much is because with every quote that I make, I'm always trying to learn new things. I'm just trying to teach myself new things, new techniques. We have been over to Germany, um, I think in 2008. And we're getting ready to move back there for our second tour. And I was in a little quilt shop and I picked up little fat quarters. I guess they call them fat meters, but um, of these fabrics. And there were some pinks and these pretty blues. And then there was this one, uh, well, actually two of this really kind of ucky green chartreuse. <laughs> and my challenge to myself was, what kind of a quilt can I make with this little handful of these fabrics, these sweet blues, these sweet pinks, and this kind of ucky green. Now, I love the ucky green, but I wasn't sure I could do a design where it would all come together cohesively and work in a quilt. So that was my challenge to myself was, what can I do with these little fabrics and how can I make them work together? And really what was fun was I had originally designed these to be just regular pinwheel blocks. And then once I got just the straight pinwheel blocks, I thought, you know, I could really kind of turn up the volume a little bit on this quilt, make it a little more special. If I used just a plate, I had a saucer that I, I used to cut around the pinwheel blocks. I applique these little squares on point and then I used a scallop stitch around to um, applique it down to a plain background. So it just made it a lot more fun. And so for me, when I got the quilt done, and it's very simple quilting, the quilting is very uh, simple with just some straight lines and nothing real fancy. But for me, I love the quilt so much when it was done. So I felt like it was a success that I was able to do some different things and, and somehow use that ugly green <laughs> with these sweet fabrics. <laughs> oh, absolutely a success. And the fact that you got to play with it and, and try out your new stitches makes it really fun. Yeah, so it's just, just something, again, it was one of those that it probably nobody has seen it. I think I blogged about it years ago, but that was it. Never have shown it at a show or anything. But again, I would never part with it because I just love it. <laughs> And it just was a fun challenge to myself. Okay, boys, you ready? Next one. Here we go. But I love that one. And, and you, know again, I you need to think outside the box. With simple shapes, you can do extraordinary things and use those stitches on your machines. That's exactly what I was going to say was, you know what I love about that quilt is that you needed a circle, so you found a saucer and you made it happen. And you know, a lot of us have to think outside the box and figure out, you know, how to make it work. 
Yeah, they were just five inch um, little uh, uh, pinwheels, straight pinwheel blocks. And it was okay in that way, but I thought, you know what, circles would be cuter. <laughs> and I didn't have a, a straight circle shape at the time with me, so I just used this awesome and cut them out. Oh, great. Okay, this one was when I did the book Modern Quilts and More for American Quilter Society. And can I just say how grateful I am that um, I have been part of the AQS family for so long. Y'all have published six of my books. Hopefully, um, you know, more good things will come down the pike. And I love still designing for the magazine. And, um, but this was in Modern Quilts and More. And it was, uh, I wanted to try to um, show patterns with traditionally based blocks, but with a more modern aesthetic. So I realize a lot of modern cultures do a lot of improv piecing. I'm not, I'm not a good improver. I like order and I like traditionally based piecing techniques. I like to, you know, make traditional units, but um, I wanted to give it a more a modern aesthetic, and that's what this is. You know, this is just zigzag stars. And very, very simple. Actually, there's four fabrics, well, five, including the background, and some very traditional shapes, but just, again, some flying bees laid out differently, and some straight line quilting, and I just, this one I've always had an affinity for, and I always love this one, and just thought it was fun. I love that one too, and that's so unique. And I, I like the use of the of the red and the orange together. And normally you wouldn't put those two together. Right. But so nice. Right. Yeah, it has a little bit of static to it that the red and the orange are right next to each other, and then the purple, which you know is a complementary color to both green and orange, kind of ties it in and kind of calms it down because yeah, that is a really static color. Um, but you know what? Anything goes. And I have seen somebody make this in blacks, grays, and reds, and it was stunning. So, you know, you can think outside the box when it comes to just simple colors, you know, just to make it, make it different. But this was in Modern Quilts and More, and I just thought it'd be fun to revisit some of the quilts in that book, um, which I think is still available from, from AQS. And I know you all run some sales from time to time, so maybe now's a good time to treat yourself to that book if you don't have that in your library. Yes, that's absolutely right. Um, ShopAQS.com, you can find a wealth of, of all of those books and tools, and um, members always get 20% off, so that's another good reason to become an AQS member. Yeah, absolutely. So that's just a fun one. And again, it's just very traditional blocks, traditionally based units set into a modern design. And I've got another one coming, and this is my, I think, my favorite from the modern book. Um, and it is so simple. And so easy to do, and yet it's so striking. So they're bringing it up right now. I can't wait so. to see. I, I love how you're able to take more traditional units and, and make them into a modern quilt, because a lot of times yeah. we think modern and we're a little bit afraid of it, you know? Right. <laughs> but it's not that hard to do. You, know, you can, you can adapt what you know and make it a beautiful modern quilt. There we go. Look at this one. This is just called Color Wheels. And again, it was, I bought a fat quarter bundle of solids and I had all these pretty colors and I thought, well, what can I do that's simple? Now my friend Carolyn Archer of Ohio Star Quilting quilted this for me, but she used a very modern design. She did a little um, sort of like a spiral graph design in the center, but the rest of this design is just a modern, uh, modern fill, I guess you would call it. But here I just took circles and, um, even though I hand drew these out, I know that if you have like the Accu cutter, um, they, have, um, they have the circles, you can cut these really, really fast, or you can just draw them out like I did and fuse them together, and then I just stitched them down, um, just layered them and stitched them down, and then I thought it would be really fun to put, you know, the one oddball in there, just, <laughs> just because, you know, you need something to have a focal point. So, but this was one of my favorites. Everybody loves it. Um, and then I just used a fun uh, striped fabric for the for the binding, just to give it, you know, a little more, uh, uh, just a little kick of fun. I love that. Can we get a little closer look at the binding? I, I, yeah. I can read the stripes from here, but I'd love to see it up close. And Mr. Kim, you're doing a great job. Yes, you are. It's really, you. really good at, here, and I'll fold this over like this a little bit so you can see it on the white. 
Oh, so you know, it's, it's so crisp heart. against that white and those colors are so striking. I love how you're able to bring those solid colors into the binding there with the stripes. It's a really unique idea. Yeah, and it was just, so, it was kind of an afterthought and I had it in my stash, which is always a good thing when you can find stuff in your stash. <laughs> That's absolutely right. And you know, I think this would actually look really beautiful on a black background. And then you do like whites, whites and creams or something here, or just maybe even just bright reds, I don't know. But you could use a black for the background and I think it would really make those colors pop. So I'd love to see that done, someone do that. Absolutely. And I wanna ask you, um, while they're switching that out, you were talking a lot how you like to use the bright solid colors and you have a yeah. line of fabrics um, called Solidish. Where can people right. check it out? They are, um, and, and how that came about was really funny. A couple years ago at Quilt Market, I was talking to the reps from Timeless Treasures because I love to use their fabrics, they have gorgeous fabrics. And I do love using solids, but sometimes I enjoy using blenders. And I want, it to, I want it to read like a solid from a distance, but when you get up close to it, you can see there's um, some texture or it's a little mottled a little bit. And so I was explaining this to the rep. I said, I love your solids, but I really, I really want a, 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 something with some texture. And I was, I, you know, was talking to him and, and showing him what I thought. And I said, you know, it's solid. <laughs> and, they, and I remember Lisa said, the rep there, she said, oh, that's a good name. And I said, I want that name. <laughs> Give it to me. This is we're going to keep it. Yeah, so that's how it came about. It's solid-ish. I love so it. They sort of look solid, but they have some texture. Okay, this is another one from that Modern Quilts and Warm book. Again, it doesn't get out very often, but I love this. This is called Dresden Daisies. And I thought it would be fun to do some simple shapes in a, in a non-traditional way. So these are great, I use stripes. I use these stripes and you'll laugh, the stripe, the stripes came from a fabric line. It was children's, it was a children's conversation print with like dump trucks. And I found it, I just cut around the dump trucks <laughs> and used the stripes to cut wedges on each of these and then I found some uh, black and white dots and black and white stripes and I made these giant Dresdens and then used decorative stitching on the machine to, to actually sew this down. So I used a big scallop here and I used these um, just um, filled in uh, satin stitch circles here and over here, oh we'll need to come closer Mr. Moore, to show this because I want people to see that they can use their decorative stitches on their machine. Here I did this, these oval satin stitches, and then I went back over the oval satin stitches with a triple stitch and some heavy yellow thread on top of it. And that's how I made that pretty, pretty accent over it. And then if you'll zoom in right here too, again, I did a plain, thick, black satin stitch around this to applique the circle down and then I used a heavy yellow thread about a 30 weight uh, yellow thread to zigzag on top of it but look at how um, pretty it looks it's such a nice touch to use these um, to use your stitches to add decorative accents to your quilts whenever you can Oh, absolutely. I love how you did that. And a lot of times, I, I don't know about everybody else, but I'm sometimes afraid of my decorative stitches. <laughs> I'm like, I have a no. great stitch. But yeah. what a great no, idea. You shouldn't. And down here, here's the absolute um, opposite. I used a yellow triangular satin stitch here, these triangles, and then stitched over the top of that. It's called stitch stacking. And then I stitched over it with a triple stitch and heavy black thread just right through it. Again, it was just another way to um, show, uh, to show some accents, to make the applique a little more special. And I love doing that. It's, it's always fun to kind of, it just makes, it draws people in. And when they see it hanging, they want to come up and say, oh, how was that done? So and it just, I don't know, it just adds a little something to your machine applique and makes it more special. So don't be afraid to try decorative threads or your heavier weight threads for decorative stitching and don't, and, and don't be afraid to add this to your, to your simple machine applique because it really ups 
it just makes everything look a little bit more special. Oh, that is great advice. And I, and I know a lot of people will be wondering, um, do you have a specific type of thread that you prefer to use? Um, well, I typically use cotton thread. And I love Orofil, 50 weight for piecing. Um, and, but Orofil comes in different weights, and sometimes I use their thicker weights. Um, the sulky threads, I love sulky threads too. Um, again, I'm not afraid to try heavier weight threads for certain things, never for piecing. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> stick with a 50 weight cotton thread for piecing. But when you're doing machine applique, it's really great to add some heavier weight threads. You'll need to change your needle size. You may need to take your needle size up to a 90 to allow for those thicker weight threads to pass through so they don't fray or break. But if you do that, you should be good to go. But always, always, always test on a sample first. Okay. It's always good. And I always test everything first because sometimes you have to make changes either in the stitch length or in the tension. Not typically so much in the tension, but sometimes you have to lengthen your stitches so that they're not all just jammed in there. So yeah, and the okay. last thing you want to do is have to rip out those decorative stitches. So make sure that you try them out first. You are not kidding. Decorative stitches are not for the faint of hearted when you have to rip them out. So um, here's one again called Just Dotty. And here is again where I, I love this quote. I have two versions and now we're going to be kind of at the break. But Kent, if you will um, come in. Again, this is just very simple two and a half inch squares with a background square and then um, just circles, appliqued on top. But instead of using just a single needle, all of the decorative stitching was done with a twin needle and variegated threads so that it gave a really fun finish. I love this one up here. I think you can really see that one. And um, again, it's a fun way to use a twin needle for um, your, your machine applique. How about this one right over here? Can you all see that? Now here's the thing you wanna know about using a twin needle for your applique. It doesn't look so great with those decorative stitches that you would think like leaves and flowers and ducks. You know, your decorative stitches that actually look like something. Where the twin needle shines, is when you use it with simple utility stitches, those joining stitches, those um, edge finishing stitches, you, the utility menus on your machines, which even most basic machines have those, that's where putting a twin needle in and using decorative that threads just brings it to a whole new level, it really ups your game and makes your, your machine application splendid. So don't be afraid to try that method too. Okay, boys, you wanna switch this one out? Well, and, and for those of us who have never used a twin needle, can you tell us what, uh, what distinguishes that from just your regular um, sewing machine needle? Yeah, actually it's a needle that it, it has a little bar across, like a little T-bar and two needles coming out of it. So it's got one uh, post at the top that fits into your machine just like a regular needle would, but it's got two needles coming out of it. It could be called a double needle. And they come in different widths, too. That's the other thing you need to know. They come in a width of like two, four, six, maybe an eight. I don't think so. I think six is the highest. It also comes in like a 2.5, a three. And the, the width, uh, the number delineates like if it's a two, the needles are really close together. If it's a three, it's a little bit further out, a four is a little bit further. So you'll get different looks by what size twin needle. And be sure to check with your sewing machine because a lot of them have a setting for using a twin needle, which means that you need to tell it you've got a twin needle in your machine so it won't let you choose a, um, a design that's going to swing so far left or right that you break those needles. So a lot of times you may need to refer to your owner's manual or something. Sometimes it's right on the screen, but make sure you tell your machine that you're using a twin needle so you don't break those needles when it's swinging right and left. That is good advice. I've broken my fair share of needles, so it's a good thing to, to have that warning. We all have. We all have. Here is a smaller version of what we just saw. Here, instead of five, um, the, the blocks themselves are smaller. I had five in a row 
on the last one, five two and a half inch squares. Here, they're just four in a row. The, the circles are smaller. Again, I just used a twin needle. I just thought you'd love, love to see this in a different color way. Um, it's kind of the same idea. It's just a fun way to use your threads. And here, I actually um, changed up and, and use different threads, different colored threads in each side of the twin needles. So I might have put a green and a purple thread in my twin needles. So it gives it a really interesting effect. I love it done in those colors. It reminds me of my favorite flower, which is the hydrangea. <laughs> Oh, I love hydrangeas. Oh, so let's see if we can find one like that here. Um, here's one. So we have the green and, and a variegated mint right here, but then a solid green thread right above it. Oops, sorry. I'm trying to keep it so it, it, it shows. Um, so I, you know, I just kind of mixed them up, played with them a little bit. You know, kind of anything goes. And this was just a fun experiment, and I just wanted to make it a little smaller and just more of a wall hanging size. And, you know, and now that I got it hanging, it kind of goes good with our wall colors right in here. I may need to find a spot on the wall to hang this up. <laughs> Absolutely does. You should because it goes so well in that room. It's so bright and beautiful. <laughs> well, this is about the halfway point. Um, if you want to stop for a moment and. Uh, I and sure do. Your well, first of all, thank you so much. I am so excited to see these amazing quilts and to take a little yeah. bit of a tour back in time, you know, through what has been in the AQ magazine and what we've published in the books and just your other lesser known quilts because so what, a treat. Quilts. <laughs> what a treat. And so yeah. I can't wait to see everything else you have. And now I'm going to tell everyone at home, this is the exciting part when I tell you about the giveaway. So Genomia America is sponsoring this trunk show today. Um, we have their national spokesperson, Kimberly Einmo. We are having such a treat with her. And I wanna tell you, if you go to quiltweek.com slash trunk show, you can enter to win a Genomi Skyline S6 sewing machine valued at $1,999. And this machine is going to let you take your sewing to the next level with all sorts of brand new features. Um, you're going to be able to make those cool and beautiful um, custom stitches. Uh, you can do special things with this machine. So you definitely want to try to get your hands on one of those. So go to quiltweek.com slash trunk show, get in on it, uh, see if you can win that machine. I know they're going to give it out uh, pretty soon. I think maybe at the end of the month. I wish I could enter, but I can't. <laughs> so one of you needs to go out and win that. And with that, we're going to have a little word from our sponsor, Janome, featuring their national spokesperson, Kimberly. Be sure to contact your local Janome dealer about the Continental M7 and my complete ruler package today. Thank you, Janome America, for that wonderful spotlight, and thank you for sponsoring this trunk show. Kimberly, I can't wait to see everything you have to show us in the second half. All right, I'm ready. Oh my goodness. And, and I do want to thank Janome for sponsoring me to be here with you all. This is so much fun and I hope you're enjoying this as much as I'm enjoying pulling these quotes out and, and letting them see the light of day, which they don't always see. So that's kind of fun for me too, because I don't get to revisit these much. Oh, well, so. I'm enjoying it. I know everyone at home will be <laughs> too. Well, I wanted to point out a visitor in the sewing room right now. Um, it may be Mr. Kim Campano, or that's Cheeto. A lot of people know Cheeto. He's the Janome cat. He has his own Instagram account, and he is very often to be found in the studio with me, um, supervising all my, my work and my efforts, and he lets me know when, when things need to be better or I need to change it, but he, he hangs out with me a lot in here when my machine is up where right now it's sunk down in the cabinet, but when my machine is up, he's usually on it or on the bed of it. But right now he's just hanging out with us here. So thought we'd introduce Cheeto because he is such a special guy. What a good boy, Cheeto. I'm so <laughs> glad to be able to see you. Yeah. Okay, so now um, in that uh, Jelly Roll Quilt Magic book, um, my I think my most popular uh, quilt ever was Lone Starburst. I still teach it all over the place and a lot of people have seen 
the typical Lone Star Burst quilts that I typically show, the ones in the book. Um, but this one is one that is a version that doesn't come out very often. And I thought it would be fun to show because this one is completely random. <laughs> this was done with no uh, rhyme or reason. It's the same technique as my Lone Star Burst. In fact, I'll just show the book right here where this is because a lot of people love these little starburst quilts and they are so amazing because there's no Y seams. There's no, um, it's all straight blocks. Even when you're making these kind of lone starburst, um, these lone starburst blocks, but there's no Y seams. It's all straight sewing. And a lot of people know this quilt, but this one is a little bit different. It's a version of it where I just had a jelly roll with all basically medium uh, fabrics and I didn't really pay any attention to how they went together. I just sewed strips together, cut diamond units and kind of put them together, fall where they may. And this is, this is the result. And so I just think it's like a fiesta. It just kind of looks like a, a fun little fiesta. And uh, just, you know, just kind of fun, something different. That's such a happy quilt. And, and I see the, like you were saying before, um, what reads is solid, they're not necessarily solids, are they? No, not at all. Some of them have a little bit of a print in it. It was just one jelly roll though. This is just one jelly roll, one background fabric. And the background fabric actually has some texture in it too. So, but it's just fun. And it's just, um, the blocks are 10 inch blocks and they're sewn straight across like this. So um, it really is, it, it's an awesome quilt, easy to make because you're just making 10 inch blocks and then you're sewing block to block to block to block and then row to row to row to row. So it's, it's really easy to put together. You know, it's just how you're rotating the blocks that you get the overall design. So you're not really making stars. It, it, you can make stars, but it's just how you rotate the blocks to get the design. So it's a lot of fun. I would have never guessed that they're sewn together that way. It looks a lot more intricate than that. So how yeah. impressive for, for people who might be a little bit afraid of the wise right. or the stars, this is the way you can make that quilt very easily. Exactly. So, or come and see me at an AQS show where I teach this too. Yes. They can come and be part of it in class. Okay, boys, next one. And so the next one is um, a version of this but instead of two and a half inch strips, I used one and a half inch strips, and it is really, really beautiful. Well, and, and I want to pause for just a second. Oh, I was going to say, I just want to pause for a second, because when you showed us Cheeto, we got to see some books um, and some templates yeah. as well. Um, and I want to let people know that we have uh, those on Shop AQS. If you'd like to yeah. get, um, take a look at those books and, or maybe get your hands on a template. Um, and you can probably also get some of those templates at your local Janome dealer. So right. it's a really good way to be part of everything that Kimberly is inspiring you to make. So that's my signature line of rulers, the Precision Flying Geese and Half Square Triangle Ruler, Precision Pre-Cuts Ruler, and the Precision Jelly Roll Ruler. And it makes cutting so easy, even if you have eyes that are, don't see as clearly and sharply as you used to. Um, I, they come in two colors, and I have the most commonly used sizes that you cut over and over and over again in the mint green on these two and the Precision Flying Geese and Half Square Triangle Ruler is a two color, two sided ruler for making flying geese and half square triangles from half and whole size strips. So they're really easy to use, they're uncluttered, they're simple, and it's, you're, you can cut accurately at a glance with, without struggling to see the unit that you're cutting. So if you cut a lot of two and a half inch squares, two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles, five and a half inch squares, these rulers make it super, super easy to lay it down, see at a glance, you cover the raw edge with the mint green line and it will disappear, your raw edge of fabric will disappear under the mint green line and then you know you're cutting 100% accurately. And really this, this came as a result of see a need, fill a need. I was, you know, when I came up with these, it was because I was, um, our boys were younger, I was doing the mom's taxi thing during the evenings and doing sports events, and at night when I would find this, some my eyes would be tired, and I, I struggled to see the units I was cutting, and this, this solved that problem. 
So that's, that's really a really big need about. for a lot of us, you know, to have those bright colors there and be able to know for certain that you're cutting correctly. Uh, that, yes. that's, uh, that's a good peace of mind to have. So you should check yes. out the rulers if you can. So, honey, you want to come over and show this? This is a really special quote. It was quoted by my friend, Christine Lacroix, she's French, and I sent this all the way to France to have her quilted. And look at these, it's the same technique as the last one I just showed you. The blocks are still straight set blocks. So here's a block, here's a block, here's a block. So even though you see a bunch of stars, the blocks were sewn into rows and then row to row. I mean, so you sew the blocks together and then you sew the row to the next row to the next row to create this overall design. And it was just one and a half inch strips instead of two and a half inch strips and one jelly roll, one background fabric. That's all I did was I took one jelly roll, mixed it all of the, the strips up and came up with this design. So it's a lot of fun. It looks like a lot of fun and we all have jelly rolls. I have jelly rolls lying around. So it's good to know that we could make something beautiful out of it. Yes. Absolutely. It's the same technique as I showed you with the two and a half inch strips, but I don't know. I just think this one's so pretty and Christine did such a good job on the custom quilting on it. And it just, it, this is again, just a happy quilt. <laughs> sure it is. The custom quilting is truly gorgeous. I love how it goes around the edges there and just reflects, um, yeah. reflects the blocks and, and brings the whole thing together. It's, it's right. really quite nice. Right. Oh, thank you. So that's part of the uh, Lone Starburst series. <laughs> and your <laughs> Lone Starburst that. classes that you teach for AQS yes. are almost always the first to sell out. So I know that people love them. If mm -hmm. you can make it to an AQS show, um, we hope that you do and you uh, take one of Kimberly's classes. Yes. And I always teach it there because they do sell out. People keep coming back. The really cool thing about that Lone Starburst um, technique is I've made what, I mean now about 18 of these quilts. I have never used the same layout twice. There are so many different layout options mm -hmm. for using these blocks. Depending on how you rotate the blocks, you can get all kinds of different designs, different layouts, um, some really modern, long, uh, long strips. It, it's just amazing. It's like a, it's like a log cabin block but with all kinds of um, really cool layout options. So I've had fun with that. Now this one's a really big quilt. And I don't know if you all remember in 2000, I think 17, I did a series uh, quilt for you all with baskets. Do you remember that? It was called Gathering. Right. So what I did was when the magazine, I, I had made two quilts for that series in the same colorway. And I forget what the name of the fabrics were, but it was bright and cheerful and, and um, they were pinks and greens and blacks. And I made a king size and then a queen size version for that series. But when the magazine appeared, I decided to make it again using um, cherry wood fabrics because we all love those really gorgeous cherry wood fabrics. And this time as I made it in real time with the readers, I really worked hard at this one because I had three bundles of cherry wood fabrics. I had a light, a medium bundle, and a dark bundle. And what I did was, as even though the rows for each installment in the series go diagonally like this, what I did was I shaded it from upper left to bottom right. So I worked really hard with the fabric placement to have the shading go across the row. So we have all our lights and brights up here, and then you have the more medium colors here in the middle. And I, I ended up with all the darks down here. And I had a lot of fun working on how to do that shading while having the diagonal rows go in one direction. So that was, it was a challenge to me and I did it in real time with the readers. That was fun. But a lot of people didn't get to see this finished. Oh, I love seeing it finished. And you know what's cool is you don't even, uh, I mean, logically realize that that's what you've done. It just looks like there's a light source in the, in the left-hand corner exactly. of that quilt. And I didn't want it to be obvious. I didn't want that shading effect to really be obvious. I, I, that's why I thought I would share it today. I wanted to point out there was a lot of thought and planning for me that went into it. 
but I wanted it to be very subtle. I wanted the shading to be very, very subtle. So I'm really proud of this one. You should be. It is subtle and it's so effective and, and it's a good lesson for those um, of us out there to try something that challenges us because it, it could really turn out to be something unique and beautiful. Right. Right. And so I'm always, uh, always challenging myself. What, what's also interesting about this is I have been quilting for ooh, nice, um, 26, 27 years, a uh, long time. And before I did this series quilt, I had never made a basket quilt. <laughs> I don't know how that escaped me, but it was always kind of on my bucket list. And again, I wanted to do something that was traditional in, you know, basket, ba basket locks are traditional um, by nature, but I thought that the, the um, on point setting, you know, the diagonal rows was a little bit different than I had seen anywhere else. So for me, this was really fun to come up with a new design to make it fresh. So this was a lot of fun. And this, I do, um, this is, uh, I have links on my website now for these designs since this was published so many years back. But if you have the 2017 magazines of AQ Magazine, you will find those patterns right in there. And will you tell us your website so everyone can go check that out? Absolutely. It's www.kimberlyimo, that's spelled K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y-E-I-N-M-O.com. Perfect. Well, definitely go check that out. You'll be inspired. I know I am. And I have to say, oh. um, spelling your name, you're very good at saying N-M. <laughs> Or we'll say Nancy Mary or something like that, because a lot of people use right. that. That's a Norwegian name. Kent is very Norwegian. <laughs> I didn't realize that, but it makes sense. Come yeah. on, yeah. boys, ready for the next one. And so while we're revisiting um, series quilts here, I have another series quilt that I did for AQ Magazine. I love designing for AQ Magazine. It really is the only magazine I designed for. Um, <laughs> but I love working with you all. You all are family to me, everybody there. I just have such a heart for everyone that works at, at American Quilter Society. Oh, well, we so feel that, exactly the same way about you. <laughs> and your so whole family. <laughs> Thank you. The next series quote is Pleasantville. And oh my goodness, the response we have gotten from Pleasantville when it ran. I, you know what? Yesterday I got an email from a lady who finished her quilt. I posted it on my Facebook page. I shared it. Um, she had, did a black, gray, and uh, a black, gray, and red version of Pleasantville, and it's gorgeous. This is Pleasantville. And I, again, I just cannot get over the response, the huge response from around the country and around the world that we received from people following along and making this quilt. And this again was made from one jelly roll and one background fabric. So it was really, I mean, I just love doing that. I love, or, or just fat quarters. And just taking your fat quarters, whatever you have on hand to make, you know, to make these units. Really, one jelly roll? I can hardly believe that. That's incredible. It was either, I know, I, I misspoke. One jelly roll and charm squares, because oh, I do have some charm squares. squares. Yeah. I have yeah. to say, I see why the response was so, um, so big for that, because I think that's my favorite quilt so far, too. Yeah, I love this one. So it's been really fun. And again, I just, it, I, I'm not ready to use it for, for a throw on the couch with our animals. We have some older pets, but um, I love this one. And I, I have visions of hanging it in our room one day or using it on the bed because <laughs> it's just so pretty and it's so cheerful. And, and I, would, I would make this one again. It was such a fun pattern to make. Yeah, I really, I really like that one. You should hang it up in your house, but I understand about the orange fur might be something that you want to keep it off yeah. the couch. Okay, guys. But I love making sampler quilts, and I've made a lot of sampler quilts in my life, mm -hmm. partly because it gives me a chance to try new things, yes. try new blocks, um, try to take traditional blocks and make them more easy to piece. So I'm always looking for ways to redraft blocks so that I can take some of the fussiness out of them because some of them are really, really uh, beautiful, but traditionally they might have been a little harder to put together. 
So I am always challenging myself with sampler quilts. And here's one that I did. Um, and this is a version of another one that I did, but it's a different colorway. This is all batiks. And again, it's um, just my way of sampling things. Now, people might have remembered this design because I did a blue and white version that um, Judy Madsen of Green Fairy Quilts quilted for me. And it was absolutely drop dead gorgeous. She did such a great job with that blue and white version. But I made it again using these batiks because again, I just wanted to kind of play with um, colors. I wanted to kind of gradate my colors so that you could see, um, you know, especially with the flying geese here, how I gradated the fabrics that, that came in the, the grouping and I used fat quarters for this. And because, you know, you have some applique shapes here and things and here's that, that pinwheel circle that showed up again. So I'm always trying to play with things just to see how I can make them look different or how I can piece them more easily and more accurately. Even here, these little fun, um, what are these, trapezoids? Uh, what's this little shape? Oh, come on, my, my engineering that husband. Sounds right. <laughs> yeah, so all right, trapezoids, we'll call them that. Is somebody <laughs> else there? But these are just half square triangles set side by side. Um, matching half square triangles and I just rotate them different so you get this little funny geometric shape. So I love taking simple things and making them more special. And I believe we call it a parallelogram. Parallelogram. Parallelogram, that's it. Thank you. Right, I remember yeah. that from geometry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was in high school, <laughs> um, I was a straight A student, but I almost didn't pass geometry because I just hated it so much. And I can remember whining to my mother and saying, when will I ever use this in real life? And here I am using geometry every day of my life. So <laughs> that has a way of keeping me humble. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know what I love about sampler quilts is that, you know, you're not necessarily stuck on one thing, right? You can work on one unit and then if you get sick of piecing flying geese or whatever, you get yeah, applique in the, in the next part. Or, or it's a great way to, to, to try out a, a bunch of different skills in one quilt. Exactly. Right, exactly. I mean, here I combine um, what's called a propeller block with some some leaves i mean you know i just i was just combining different unit units to put together some fun things you know just two uh star and a star so you've got some sachi stars together um just one little lone star a little dresden plate up here it was just really fun for me to just try different things like you said try one of something um, and just throw them in here to make it work but what i love about using pre-cuts this is just a really good tip is when you buy a bundle, whether it's a, um, a fat quarter bundle or you buy a layer cake bundle, which is 10 inch squares or even your jelly rolls, everything in that bundle already goes together. You don't have to worry about where you're going to place those fabrics in your quilt. No matter where they end up, your quilt's going to look beautiful. That's the great thing. So the works for people who have feel challenged about choosing fabrics, that's why pre-cuts work so well for them because they don't have to worry about will this go or not. They don't have to worry about that. It's already, that part is already taken out of the equation. So all they have to worry about is the fun. That's absolutely right. Somebody already did the color design for you. So right. you just start sewing. Okay, boys. Yep. Okay, so now we're going to show, I'm going to show a quilt. Um, kind of a two-way quilt. One, one is a block one way and it makes a whole beautiful look and then I'm going to show it to you where I just kind of made a little alteration and turned it upside down and it looks completely different. And it's coming up next and this is made using my solidish fabrics um, from, from Timeless Treasures. So this is just, um, this one is made with 18 10 inch squares plus a little fabric, a little extra fabric for some long strips in the border. I'm gonna show you here, it's called Arrowheads. I know this one, I'm so excited to see this quilt. I love this quilt. I love this one too. And again, this is just 18 10 inch squares. Any 10 inch squares you want, a background fabric, and then I used, um, I used an eighth of a uh, yard to make these, these long arrow shafts. Yes, that's it. So these are just these little arrows. Arrowheads are made from 10 inch squares. The leftover bits from that square is used, is used in the feathers. 
So you had enough left over from all of these 18 to use in the feathers. And I just love this arrowheads quilt. This is one of my favorites. I have a, a grandmother that was a, she was full Cherokee. So um, this kind of is a nice um, nod to my heritage um, for my Native American heritage. Oh, that's such a good tribute to that. And I, and I want to ask you a question. When you're yes. designing these quilts, do you design them with pre-cuts in mind? I do. I do. I actually try to think about, because I just love using pre-cuts. I really do. That's kind of where my heart is. doesn't mean I always stick to pre-cuts, but with this one, I absolutely said, I'm going to take 10 inch squares. What can I do with it? Then I had to work out the math of how many of these arrowheads to make so that I ended up with the right number of the leftover bits to create the, the feathers. So there was a lot of math to it, but once I got it, the other great thing is, you'll notice that once you create this block, okay, it doesn't intersect with any other section, so you don't even have to worry about your points really, because I just sewed this row together, then I made a row of just three here and added spacer blocks on the end, and so when you sew row to row to row to row, it not only gives you that staggered effect, but you're not intersecting points. So everybody likes that. <laughs> I like that. Very smart. And, and I want to ask, um, does your solidish, do your solidish fabrics, do they come in pre-cut bundles? They did. Right now they haven't run any more of them. Um, it's just in yardage. And you can find those at your local quilt shop. And um, I have some, no, I don't even anymore. I have, I have some, a few little bundles okay. left that, uh, through my website. So be sure and check that out. I have a few bundles of this left, a few fat quarter bundles. So, but other than that, no, they're just in yardage now. But you could use any like 10 inch squares that you have laying around. And then you'll need a little bit for your arrow shafts. But after that, you're all good to go. But I want you to pay attention to this block or this shape right here because I've got a whole different look for it. Okay, boys, you ready? So pay attention to the shape of the arrowhead, and then I'm gonna show you what I did to transform that same block into <laughs> something equally as fun. <laughs> uh, I can't wait. I've been so inspired by how you transform just a simple block into something totally different. I love doing that. It's, I, it's, I can tell. it's where my heart is. <laughs> I just enjoy it so much. I enjoy looking at things and, and changing them in simple ways so you get a completely different look. Well, and if you're making that, um, that quilt at home, what's great about that is, you know, you can go out and get the 10 inch squares and then I know everyone has enough fabric lying around their house to just Indeed. make those little arrow shafts. And so that's- Yeah, really absolutely good. Yeah, it doesn't take much. Now here, I did change the base of the, the tops of those arrowheads. Oh my gosh, this is the same block and Christmas tree. <laughs> I love that so much. How cute. It is the same, the same technique for cutting those, those squares, all right, the, the 10 inch squares. The only thing I did different was I, I, instead of using that base for the arrowhead or what was the top of the arrowhead, I, I just had you use a little bit of green fabric or whatever color you want. And we're going to make little tree stems or little trunks, but with the leftover bits from that 10 inch square, you can make little pieced uh, trees on the outer border. So what's left over, there's enough from each one of these to find its mate in the outer border. So it just works out perfectly. And that was really fun to do the little piece trees in the outer border. So you're using almost every bit of every inch of fabric from your 10 inch squares. Oh, I love that so much. And I love everything Christmas related. <laughs> and, and what I really like about that is sometimes when you look at Christmas decorations or Christmas quilts, you see a lot of dark greens, dark reds, and it, it's sort of a dark fabric. But once again, you've brought that light background um, to really make it pop. And I love how, how bright that makes it. Yes, actually, and it's just it's just a mint green fabric, and I tried white, and white would have been just fine, but then I thought, oh, I don't know, what can I do here to, you know, just make it look, I don't know, a little bit more special, and I happen to have some mint green background fabric, and just thought it would be fun, and then my friend Carolyn, she just did an all-over pantograph on top of this with little trees and little ornaments. Do you want to come in a little bit closer, let people see this closer? Yeah, I'd love to see and, the trees and ornaments up close. Yeah, 
so it's just little trees here. There's even a little bird right here, a little, little song bird, little stars, ornaments, and it's an all over design. So um, just something really fun. It doesn't, you know, not every quilt has to be custom quilted. You can use those all over pantographs and it looks just beautiful. That's absolutely right. And what a great quilt to bring out over the holidays. Yes, that would be, absolutely. Would be on I, would actually, I, I would hang this up through January, actually. Um, sure. You know, just really enjoy it kind of through the whole wintry season. Because, yeah, it is Christmassy, but it kind of, I think it kind of goes into almost Valentine's Day. <laughs> you know, it can. It, it, it's, it's evergreen trees, you know. It's not necessarily, yeah. and because it's not, you know, so rooted in, in the traditional Christmas-looking colors, right. it, it really can be used all these similar language. Yeah. So this one's a fun one, but again, it's just, it's just that arrowhead turned upside down. So this was really fun. Okay, boys, next one. Thank you. We're kind of in the home stretch here. I, I appreciate everybody hanging with us for this long. We've got two more to go. I'm going to be so sad to see the end of it. We have had so much fun here today and I want to thank you and I want to thank Janome America again for sponsoring this because it's been, it's been just a blast for me and I know everyone else is enjoying watching. And you know what? I forgot one that was over here. Can, can you come and help me hold this up? When we were talking samplers, I had this in yellow. It's that same quilt again, but this way here it's done with a yellow background. And again, just one, this was a fat quarter bundle with a background. So this is again that same quilt that we talked about. I just have so much fun doing that. So thank you, honey. Just something fun to show you. Yeah, that, that color reminds me of like fresh cream. That's such a pretty yellow. <laughs> it's buttery. All right, this one, I have a fun story to share with you. Um, this one, I love this one because way back in the year 2000, 20 years ago, we first moved to Germany and I joined a quilt guild, in a, an American German quilt guild on the, the base at Ramstein Air Base. And I was part of this really great group of women. And we got together and we had a little bee and we were, um, somebody organized this uh, swap of these tea blocks. And we, I can't remember how many we made. I think we each made 24, kind of forget how it went now, but we each made some tea, tea blocks, traditional tea blocks, and then we swapped them and we got all these tea blocks back. Well, for a long time, I had them in a closet. I didn't do anything with them. And then, oh, I don't know, about uh, 2010, I pulled them out and I put them together in this top. And I just, you know, it's very scrappy. And I added this beautiful border. And um, again, kind of didn't think much about it. And then at some point, I gave it to my friend, Birgit Schuler, who is a lovely German lady who um, is an ex was it machine quilter and I asked her if she'd finish it for me and she said yes and and then I forgot all about it we got busy with life we moved around and then sometime I think in about 2014 2015 I saw Birgit post on her page on her Facebook page a quilt and she had quilted it and I just fell in love with it and I texted her I said Birgit that is such a beautiful quilt whose is it <laughs> And she said, you need it, it's yours. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. And you're going to think it had been like 15 years. <laughs> I have completely forgotten that I had even participated in that challenge and that, that I had given it to her to quilt. And I, and I remember when I gave it to her, I told her, quilt it on your own time. Don't worry about it. And a couple years went by and I completely forgot about it. So um, when anyway, she sent it back, she did an exquisite job. You want to come in and do a little quilt? Yeah, I'd love to see the quilting. Did a beautiful job on the quilting. And, and it does remind me of all those friends so many years ago in uh, Ramstein where we did this little exchange. And I love blues and whites. So these are just our colors, but um, I just get, I just giggle because when I saw it and I, she had posted pictures, I did not even remember having <laughs> made it or given it to her. So, you know, you just get busy. I, I don't know. <laughs> so Call it mom brain or something. something. I don't know. But well, anyway. and that, that quote is so timeless in the blue and white, uh, you wouldn't right. know because it was made 20 years ago. Right, right. And, and just kind of in spits and spurts. But yeah, really fun. And I do have good memories. I do remember all the ladies in that group. So 
um, that was that was a good time in our lives. So this one's a very special one too. Again, not an award winner, not in a magazine anywhere, but I it always makes me giggle when I think about how I didn't even recognize it. <laughs> so I thought I'd share that with you all. Oh, I love that. And and truly, to me, the most special thing about quilting is being able to do, do it with friends, you know, and have those special memories. Absolutely. And I love how even during this, these months of this pandemic, how we have all, so many of us have stepped up to reach out yeah. through this new technology, through Facebook, through social media to post these. You all have been brilliant about being so creative to do these trunk shows, to do the, um, you know, the visit to the star studios. I mean, it just is a way to connect, a way to make everybody feel like they're part of, of this, this big industry where we're all friends. And, and quilting, I just, nobody, no industry does it better than these quilters. So I that's for me. Oh, well, it's been yeah. such a treat to get to connect with everyone and, and come into their homes virtually. Yeah, and you know, it really has. I, and I don't ever take that for granted. I'm humbled that people would want to spend their time with us and, and you know, just share the laughter and the smiles and, and everything. And that's all, that's all I really wanted to do today with the lesser known quilts. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and it has been such a, such a blast and such a joy. I could spend all day with you doing this. Me too. Me too. Maybe we'll have to do it again because I have lots more. <laughs> yeah, sign me up. We'll do it. We'll do the lesser known quotes round two. <laughs> and then I thought we'd end with this one only because this is a quilt I made for me. <laughs> Maybe because it was in my heart and I knew it had to be made. I'm going to put this there. You go. And it, I do want you to get up close and true when you get a chance. This ran in American Culture Magazine this year as a three-part series in January, March, and May. And I know they still have back issues for those people who maybe aren't subscribers until now. They can go back and get back issues. But if they are subscribers, they can already get the pattern for this. I didn't make it with a series quilt in mind. It's just something I had in my heart and in my mind for about three years. I knew I wanted to make a pineapple quilt because I love pineapples. And um, this, this is one, it's just even pineapple blocks everywhere. The colors were all scraps from, I got some solid edition here, but it's just scraps from my stash. Um, I just pulled fabrics, kind of made a mess pulling all the fabrics. And I just made this for the sheer joy of it. It was just fun. But you want to come in? Well, so, joy definitely comes out in that in that quilt. It's such a joyful quilt, and I, for one, am a big fan of um, the the playing with things like using the pineapple blocks with the pineapple yeah. quilt. I think that's so cute, and I just love the little pineapple, uh, almost the sashing that you have in there of all the little pineapples yes. together. I know. I just I I love the whole. I love that it's um, a symbol of hospitality. I love the fruit itself. I mean, when we go to Hawaii, I'm just like gorging on fresh pineapple. So I just, I just love it. Um, Dole Whip, I'm right there. <laughs> it's just like Dole pineapple whip. ice cream. Oh, but it's the best little. thing in the world. <laughs> the little. So along that line, um, I do have a free pattern of, a, of one pineapple and Mr. King can show it. It's hanging on the wall here. It's on my website right now, KimberlyEinmo.com. Um, and you'll find it under the AQS tab, um, where, which means American Quilter Society. And I put that up there for free for everyone. They do not have to make it in a rainbow version. I have a version that's just like a three color version. Um, so that makes it even easier. And that's something you can do in an afternoon. I love that little quilt and I'm going to have to make it myself and then show you. It might not be as good as yours, but oh, <laughs> that's yes, okay. I'd be honored. I'd be honored. I know how busy you are. And so I know when you take time to quilt, that's special time. <laughs> yes. And I'm, I'm with you. I love pineapple everything. So it would go great in my house. Yeah. So anyway, this, I just wanted to show this. This is kind of a more recent quilt. And you know, it was, it's just one that makes me absolutely happy. And I just love this quilt so much. So it was fun to get to share it with you all and to have such, so many people say, oh, you know, I'm making that, or I want to make that for my granddaughter or whatever. That means a lot to me when somebody says that they want to make a pattern that I designed. It really touches my heart and I never ever take it for granted. 
Uh, well, it has been such a pleasure to spend this day with you and to see all these lesser known quilts and some that I recognize. I want to thank you again for lending us your time. And I want to thank Genome America for being the sponsor for this trunk show. Don't yes. forget, those of you at home, go to quiltweek.com slash trunk show to enter to win a Genome Skyline S6 sewing machine valued at $1,999. That's a wonderful, generous giveaway. We love our partners at Genomi and we love talking to you, Kimberly. It has been such, such a treat. Oh, thank you, Liz. It's like you're here in my studio with me. I just wish you were here so I could give you a big hug. Oh, I wish the same thing. It's all over, I will. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can't wait for that. And those yeah. of you watching at home, be sure if you like this video, click like and share with your friends using the buttons below. Make sure you like the American Quilter Society Facebook page so that you'll see these wonderful, wonderful videos as soon as they come up. And thanks yeah. again, Kimberly, and thank you, Janome. Thank you, Janome, and thank you, everyone at AQS, for doing this. I'm so honored I was the first one to start the Trunk Show series. What a, what a thrill. Thank you so much. Don't forget to share. That's a big one. Thank you. Absolutely. I'll see you soon, Kimberly. I can't wait. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.